Hello and welcome to our Managed On-Premise Encoding webcast by Bitmovin. In this webcast, I will show you how Bitmovin Managed On-Premise Encoding is working and give you a brief architectural overview over the solution and then we'll get into a demo of how to set this up and how it works. Now let's start out. Um, the Managed On-Premise Encoding is based on Kubernetes and Docker. Why? Mostly because Kubernetes is a solution by Google, a very mature container orchestrator solution that can run on almost any hardware and you can set it up either in your own data center and utilize your bare metal hardware or you can buy um, hosted solutions by Google or Amazon or something or you can just use your private cloud credentials to set up a Kubernetes cluster and uh, encode your video there. Um, this gives us the flexibility to span the private and the public cloud, so it's the same interface, and we enable you to use your hardware, where you have to run a Kubernetes cluster obviously, to um, handle your video encoding workloads for either workloads that are secure and cannot be transferred to the public cloud for, let's say, legal reasons like medical data or something, or um, your source files, which should never be exposed to, to the public internet. And then you can always shift access, access tasks or tasks which are not that critical to the public cloud to encode them there. Or let's say you have spare um, hardware which is underutilized, you can always use that to encode on your um, underutilized hardware and any excess uh, tasks or jobs which are, um, would, be, would overstress your infrastructure, um, you can just um, transfer to the public cloud uh, encoding and we'll handle the load there by scaling indefinitely. For storage and delivery, we either support on-premise storage like uh, Skeleti or Dell EMC or HGST, which is either a software-based solution which you would set up in your infrastructure in your data center yourself, or uh, like Dell and HGST and many others, are hardware-based uh, storage solutions which you would just uh, set up in a rack and probably have already running. And we can output to these, or you can output to the public cloud um, storages like Amazon S3, FTP, Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure. Uh, and from there, you can then um, output also to your CDN. So if you use CloudFront or Akamai or whatever, you can, use, you can output to them from your on-premise private cloud encoding to public cloud storages. So how is this working? Um, First of all, the beauty of the solution is you always communicate with the Bitmovin API and never with your on-premise API or our cloud API. It's always the same unified API you use. You can select for each job and each task. You can select which infrastructure you target, but the program interface you would integrate into your application and workflow is always the same. And you either use one of our open source uh, API clients like the Golang client or Java client or Python client. Um, or you would just program against our public REST API, which is documented on our website. And at first, you have to set up your Kubernetes cluster. So you connect, you go to the API, um, you go through the API and connect your new infrastructure there. You will get the infrastructure key, and um, you will also download from the API a tarball, which will set up Bitmovin in your data center. How this works is we don't need any set up on your side, so you just need a working Kubernetes cluster. We don't need any routing or uh, open ports or load balancing or something like that. We um, have a Bitmovin agent which is running in your data center and will communicate with the Bitmovin API to look for jobs and open tasks to do. And once you start an encoding through the API, the Bitmovin agent will pick up on that and schedule it onto your um, spin up the encoders on your infrastructure and then the encoder will run, encode your content, and output it to wherever you need to. Or once you um, don't have hardware available or your hardware is already utilized and you need something more, you can just switch the encoder version, um, the encoder infrastructure, and it will go directly to our public uh, cloud and, encode, and we will spin up the encoders in our infrastructure and run them there. So next we'll get into demo with the Python client. See you there. Hello and welcome back to our managed on-premise encoding webcast. In this part I will show you a demo of how to set up your Kubernetes cluster with the Bitmovin API and let's get into it. 
So first we'll go to our Google Container Engine. In this case, I've already set up a um, Kubernetes cluster in GCE. And this cluster is a size of 30, but you can use whatever you are comfortable with. And at first we'll connect the cluster with our local kubectl command. So I'll copy the connection command here and go to my shell and run this command. Now it has set up my credentials and I can go, go into kubectl get pods and you see the cluster is empty, it's completely new. No resources found. And if we go nodes, we see 30 nodes in the cluster. Next up, we'll go to GitHub and we have set up a, in the Bitmovin API client for Python, we have set up a CLI to do this, so and to connect the cluster. So just copy the installation command here. We'll do a pip3 in my case install of the client. And once this is installed, we will, um, I already cloned this, but you can clone yourself here, it's open source. Go to examples, encoding infrastructure, and we have a CLI client here, which is the create infrastructure pi, which we will now use to connect the cluster. So let's go into examples, uh, encoding infrastructure. And now let's run Python 3, create infrastructure. As you can see, it asks for our API key. I've prepared this already, so let's use this one. Key, and now we give it a descriptive name, in this case, moving webcast cluster. And it created the infrastructure on our um, Bitmoving API. So what we get back here is the cluster ID and the infrastructure ID. And this is used to reference what encoding region you want to select. So if you select through the API, like you would with a normal encoding in the cloud, you would just um, you just go and select another cloud region, which is called Kubernetes in this case. And you specify this ID to schedule it on this cluster. So you can have multiple um, Kubernetes clusters running and schedule encodings to different clusters on a per encoding basis. I'll also save this ID here so we can come back to it later. Down here we get the curl command which we can run and this will download the tar file. So let's untar this here. And let's go into the, the folder. And as you can see there's a readme file here. A deploy script, uh, depo uh, two shell scripts and some other things. But the beauty of the solution is that it's pretty pr transparent what's happening to your cluster. So if you go into the Bitmovin agent deployment here, you will see that this is just a regular Kubernetes uh, configuration file and it specifies what containers to pull and has also pre-set up all of your API keys and your cluster IP IDs and what, inf what URLs to um, pull. And it also sets up an image pull secret to get the images from our private register. So let's just go up here and run the deploy script. <coughs> and if we go kubectl get pods now, we'll see that we have two services starting up. One is the Bitmovin agent. This is the bastion host which uh, communicates with our API and is also the sole entry point uh, that's communicating with the internet. So if you just change the session affinity on the Bitmovin agent, you would uh, you can schedule this one to one host that has internet access while the rest of your cluster could be offline or one host that has throttled internet access. So let's see, everything is started up. And the other um, pod that is started here is the Skelety um, S3 server, which we only use for MP4 content where we need to have a temporary output for the segments. So um, now let's go into the create infrastructure and create, create simple encoding. We've set up an example here, which we can use to um, demo this. So I've already set up the API key here and I have also configured um, the credentials in another file so we don't expose our access keys here. But the important part here is the infrastructure ID. So I'll just go back and get the infrastructure ID we created earlier. And go 
configure it here. As you can see here, we configure the cloud region to be cloud region Kubernetes and what encoder version to use. So let's save this and let's run this. Python 3. So this is going out to the normal Bitmovin API as usual when you start encoding through us, but it also um, it will now schedule all of our pods to the local into the local cluster. So let's open another window and do a kubectl get pods. And as you can see, it's already starting up two new pods. One of them is the session manager, which manages the encoding for you in the cluster, and the other one is a temporary database we use for encoding. <coughs> As you can see, the encoding is enqueued while these pods are run, starting up. And we'll just do a quick watch here. Yeah, one of the pods already running. And let's go back here. Examples, infrastructure, encoding infrastructure. If we were to start another encoding and we want to not use our um, on-premise Kubernetes cluster, we can just change the cloud region here, set up to encode in the cloud or omit the cloud region, and the encoding would just start on up on our infrastructure, which is very handy if you have um, a cluster of a certain size that can only handle so many encodings and you want um, to use it to use the public cloud for access encodings or workloads which don't fit your cluster. So let's see where we're at here. Container is still creating. So now the encoding manager is started, the first pod, and it's downloading the input file. And <coughs> as you can see here, it already started all of its instance managers, so the other encoders, and it will encode the video now. Let's do a watch kubectl CTL top nodes to see the CPU usage starting to ramp up on all of the nodes. And We'll also go to our new portal and see how the encoding is doing. It's already running, and as you can see, it downloaded the file already, and now it starts to encode, and as the encoders start spinning up, the real-time factor is increasing, and this encoding should be done in around 50 seconds. So there it goes. Already at 16 times real-time. And as you can see here, all of the nodes are getting CPU saturation, but I think the encoding is already finished. So, yep, it's already finished. So let's go back to our to our example here. As you can see the script ran through, so now it's generating the manifest and writing the manifest. And there we are. So now we get the MPD URL here, and we'll just copy that and test out if it's working. Input it into the player test page here and start up. And there it is. As you can see, it encoded all of the renditions we set up earlier. So this is a 2.4 megabit, 1.2 megabit, 800 kilobit, and 400 kilobit stream. And we can jump to any point here, view the content in all its glory. So, oh, and that's all there is to it. So, if you're interested in a demo or have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you for watching. Bye.